Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. Today we're going to be taking another look at the Precision Farming DLC and jumping into soil types. And so Precision Farming has added multiple soil types to the game. And you can see here on the mini map I've got up, last time we took a look at taking soil samples, which is how you identify which soil is in a given field. And so if you're looking for some help on how to do that, um, there's another uh, video tutorial that goes into soil sampling that is in the same playlist. However, today we're going to be taking a look at the effects of those soil types. So to get started, let's jump out to the normal PDA map view here and take a look at the functionality that's been added there. So if I switch views of this map, you can see that we bought field 5 already. And if I click on field 5 here, you can see that there's a new field info display that pops up on the buying screen. And a quick sidebar, if you're having problems with being able to buy or sell land since installing the Precision Farming DLC, uh, there is a conflict with the Unit Convert Light mod or the Community Extension mod if you're using either of those. Thundar Modding has put out a fix to both of those on his Discord channel, and I'll be posting a a uh, link to Unit Convert Light in the description of this video if you uh, would like to download the latest version, which will resolve the conflict with the buy screen here and allow you to buy and sell land again with the Precision Farming DLC installed alongside the Unit Convert Light mod. Jumping back in, however, to this field info screen here, um, one of the interesting new things that have been added to the game is the concept that each soil type uh, has a different yield potential uh, for crops. And by default, those yield potentials are in, and we'll just go down the list here for the four soil types, 80% of the base game yield for loamy sand. Sandy loam is equal to what the base game uh, would normally yield for that crop. Loam is our best soil type at 1.25 or 125% of yield. And then silty clay uh, brings in 90% of the yield of uh, the base game crop. So anytime you're looking at a field, uh, you're looking for fields that have a high amount of loam or sandy loam as a backup. Loamy sand is definitely the worst soil type. And silty clay is below average, but not that bad. And so you can see here when I'm clicking on a field, my expected yield potential is 96%. And so on average, because I have so much silty clay in this field, I'm not going to yield very well. I'm going to yield less than I would have in the base game. And so if I jump over to the precision farming screen here, you can see that represented uh, with these soil types where I have no loamy sand. I've got a little bit of sandy loam. I've got some good soil here in these two bands. And then this silty clay um, is a little bit underperforming and that makes up the bulk of this field. I can click on that field in this view, but I get an economic analysis rather than the soil type breakdown. And so we're going to spend some time looking at this in a future video. So I'm going to jump back out to the normal PDA window here and I'm going to click on a different field that we don't own. And what is interesting here, so I've clicked on field four, and while I can't see the soil map for this field because I don't own it and I haven't taken soil samples of it yet, I can get a high level overview of what the soil distribution in this field is. So I know looking at the main uh, map here that you know there's no loamy sand in this field, which is good. And in fact, the bulk of this field, 44% of this field, is made up of loam, which is 105%, which would be really good uh, for us from a, a productivity perspective because just from soil alone, we're going to be increasing our overall yield potential in this field by 5%. And so when you're looking at buying land, now the quality of the soil of that land becomes really important. So if I click on field 9, this is also a high-performing field for us. If I click here over to, say, um, all of these fields are really good. Um, so we happen to buy one of the poorer fields in this area, right? So, you you know, here, field 16, this is an amazing field. It has 113% yield uh, potential. And so now this is a whole new mechanic of the game to think about is what type of soil I have 
will have a big contribution to the yield potential of that uh, particular field. If we jump back into the precision farming tab, I've gone ahead and uncovered all the fields in the map just to demonstrate um, where we've got poorer soil and what that effect might be on overall yield. So if we look over here at say field 29 or field 42 where we have a high amount of lower quality dirt and we jump back over into this window, you're going to see that my yield potential is lower you know, here I'm actually at 100% because while I do have 27% uh, of this field is poor soil, I have 33% of that field is actually really good soil. So it kind of balances out um, where if I look at field 42 as a good example, here I've got more than half of this field is poor and then 44% of this field is um, just average soil. And so now my total yield potential in this field is at 88% of base game. And so that's a fairly significant hit to overall yields. And this is a really cool mechanic of the game that I'm super excited about. Another major effect that soil type has on the game, aside from yield, is the amount of fertilizer required uh, per crop type. And so with precision farming, each crop has a um, defined target level of fertilizer that it wants to be at. And so if we flip over to the nitrogen tab here, um, you can see the nitrogen levels of the soil. And so if we just come back up here to field five as our example, you'll see that our nitrogen levels are actually really low in this field. We're at either 20 or 40 kilograms per hectare in this field. And depending on what crop we want to plant, each crop requires a certain amount of nitrogen um, to be able to grow well. And so uh, being a, from the Midwest and growing uh, corn and soybeans, um, this is one of the aspects of the game that was really interesting to me is uh, for corn, on each soil type, the nitrogen level needs are different. And so uh, keeping in mind that we're at either 20 or 40 kilograms a hectare acre right now, if I go back out to my soil types here and look at this field, in this sandy loam area of the field up here near the top, for corn, I would need a 160 kilograms per hect acre. And for our loam, I'd be targeting 200 kilograms per hect acre. And down here in our silty clay, I would need 180 uh, kilograms per hectare. And you guys are going to get really tired of me trying to pronounce that here soon. And so what's interesting to me is that I need different nitrogen levels for each of these soil types, but I also need different nitrogen levels based on the crop type. So if I were to, instead of plant corn, if we were talking about say oats, I would only target 100, 140, or 100 based on the soil type. And then, um, also, interestingly enough, um, just based on my own farming background, I know that soybeans don't tend to require a lot of nitrogen, and that's one of the reasons why they're alternated with corn is to give the ground some time to recover. Um, soybeans don't require any nitrogen, and they won't reduce the level of nitrogen in the soil as well, which is kind of the third mechanic here when we're talking about nitrogen levels is that each harvest or each um, season cycle, I am playing with seasons, as I put corn into this ground and then proceed to harvest it, it's going to reduce the nitrogen level in this ground by a certain amount. And so for corn, it's going to reduce the nitrogen level based on soil type by 140 kilograms per hectare, 180 or 140. And so while the target level um, for these three is 160, 200, and 180, in this soil type here, the silty clay, I have a delta of 40 between where I'm targeting being and how much I'm reducing it, where here my target is 200 and I'm reducing it by 180. And so I'm gonna need to apply more nitrogen back onto the loam than I will the silty clay after a given harvest. And so my price to apply fertilizer back onto this field after a harvest is going to differ based on soil type and crop type as well. And so these are all now factors that you'll have to consider when you're 
um, calculating your costs and how much profit you can make on the field. And that's where this economic analysis window that you see over here is gonna come into play. Um, and we'll dig into that a little bit more in a future video. There are a lot of different crop types to match up with each of these four soil types that we see here. And the fertilizer target levels and reduction levels are different for each crop type. One final note that I wanna point out as well when we talk about fertilizer levels is that many crops, if you apply too much fertilizer uh, and you go beyond the target level for that uh, mixture of crop and soil type, you'll actually take a yield penalty for over fertilizing. Some crops are immune to um, this penalty, but most crops are going to uh, penalize your overall yield for applying too much fertilizer. So you don't want to just max out your rate and put 200 kilograms per hectare on everything uh, because not only will that cost you additional money, uh, but it'll also hurt your overall yield for those crops. If you're curious to see the exact yield potentials and fertilizer requirements and reduction rates for each crop type in each soil type, you can drill into the zip file for the Precision Farming DLC and open up this precisionfarming.xml file. Inside of the XML file, you're gonna find a fruit requirements section that has all of the crop types in the game and outlines um, in order the soil types here match up with the order that they are in game, which from top to bottom are loamy sand, sandy loam, loam, and silty clay. And then as you can see here, just using uh, the first one, wheat here for an example, our yield potentials for each of those soil types are 80% uh, of base game, 1.0 of base game, which is the same, 1.25, which would be 125% of base game, and 0.9, which is 90% of base game yields. This target level is the target level for nitrogen for each of these crops, and then the reduction level is how much it's going to reduce your nitrogen for planting the soil. So something that's interesting here is like looking at wheat, your target level is 140, and then it's gonna reduce all 140 of that nitrogen. Where if you look at something like corn, maize, its target level is 120, but it's only gonna reduce it by 100. So it's not completely depleting uh, the nitrogen from the soil. So. It, again, these are things to think about depending on your crop rotations and the soil types and different things. There's a, now a lot of complexity with how soil types uh, affect the game. The other two properties I'll point out here in the XML file are certain crops will always allow fertilization um, regardless of the state of that um, the field. Otherwise, if this is not set to true, you're only able to apply fertilizer in fruit states before the harvest state. So once it's in the harvest state, you're not able to apply fertilizer. So that makes sense for grass uh, and uh, some of the other crops similar to that, like sugarcane or poplar, um, also have that always allow fertilization property set to true. And then I believe they've also included some of the types of crops that aren't in the base game were included in this uh, DLC, which is kind of cool of giants to uh, start working on things like that. And it makes me wonder if these are uh, things they plan to add to the game at some point in the future. And then the last remaining property, um, scrolling around a little bit here, we'll go use, uh, well, grass we could use as an example, but I'm going to use soybeans as an example, um, which is ignore over fertilization. And so I was talking about there's a yield penalty if you apply too much fertilization, but some crops don't suffer from that uh, yield penalty. And so this ignore over fertilization true are the crops that will not suffer if you put too much fertilizer on, which is interesting uh, in the case of soybeans since they don't require any nitrogen. So you're going to be able to incrementally increase the nitrogen on um, that field in a crop rotation. So corn will take a lot of nitrogen out of the soil and then you're gonna be able to apply some fertilizer as you work your way through the next season potentially so that you're not trying to put all of that fertilizer back into the soil all at once. Um, so there's some interesting 
uh, opportunities to do different things with uh, your crop rotations here and just think about which crops do and don't require uh, nitrogen. The last thing that I'm gonna show off here in this file, just because it's interesting, is they've included a lot of their calculations for what they consider the default fertilizer rates. If you don't have uh, any fruit type detected, what is it going to increase the fertilization to? Uh, and that's based on different types of fertilizer. So you've got your dry fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, liquid manure, um, digestate, and regular manure. And then down here in this bottom section, you can see that they're treating um, dry fertilizer as 20%, 27% nitrogen. Uh, your liquid fertilizer is 39% uh, nitrogen. Your manure, they're kind of taking a balance between cows and pigs since the nitrogen level in pig manure is generally a bit higher. So it looks like they've um, just balanced those uh, somewhere in the middle. And then you've got liquid manure and uh, digestate, which is um, you know the same as well between cows and pigs. So it's very interesting to see all their calculations and how they're treating it. Um, in the game compared to and comparing it to real life terminology. So this has been a brief introduction to soil types and the impact on various game mechanics. Uh, we did cover quite a bit in this video, uh, so hopefully I've done a decent job of helping you make some sense of the different mechanics here. But as always, since this is a uh, fairly complicated topic, please leave a comment below uh, with any questions you have. I'll do my best to try and answer them and uh, give me an idea if there's other areas that you'd like me to do a deep dive into. I'm happy to keep putting out some more tutorial content and we'll definitely be taking a look at the rest of the mechanics, especially uh, the effects of applying lime and fertilizer to the soil, as well as getting into the harvesting and the economic display that pops up here as well. That's all for today. Kedrick, out.